What's up everybody? It's your friend Flopalopagus and today I've got something a little bit different. Today I'm going to show you how to pack for a national level milsim operation. So what is a national level milsim operation? If you guys are unfamiliar with airsoft, you've probably never heard of it before, but if you're here and you're from the airsoft and milsim community, you're probably very familiar with uh, events run by people such as Milsim West, American Milsim, M. Sato, uh, who else is there? Third Coast Airsoft and Operation Lion Claws Military Simulation Series and other vendors that I'm sure that I missed over on the West Coast because I'm more East Coast oriented. I would probably say that any event that draws people from over 100 miles away is considered a national level event. It's a bit unfair to just say out of state because sometimes people do cross state lines for smaller games. So that's why I think it's fair to put it the way that I said. Now there's a couple of key things to keep in mind when you are packing for your national level operation. And the first and foremost thing is to not overpack. Especially if you're flying, you have that 50 pound limit on your carry-on bags or else you're gonna pay an overweight fee. And just in general, you don't wanna have too much stuff when you get there, because then you'll be you know, piling through all your stuff to try to get on your kit and figure out what you need and it's gonna be a nightmare. So you wanna pack fairly concisely, but at the same time, you don't wanna underpack either. You wanna make sure that if you break something that's vital, you have a backup for it while you're there or else you're either gonna not have fun because you're gonna be without that item or you're gonna be stuck paying out the butt for more replacement stuff at the on-site vendor. Now that I've kind of given you a primer, let's get to looking at what exactly I have set aside for my next national operation. What you see here is the majority of what I'm taking with me. Now I may have forgotten one or two small things and I'm gonna to try to get to everything on my list for you guys so you'll have an idea of what exactly to bring. Now it might seem overwhelming at first, but I promise you all of this stuff breaks down into basic elements. I'm going to take apart each group here and I'm gonna go over each and every piece that I'm bringing so that way it gives you guys a good idea of what I'm bringing and why I'm bringing it. Let's start with the main piece of kit, and that's your rig. So what we have here is all the elements to my rig, all of the stuff that I wear onto the field every time I go and play airsoft or military simulation. So let's take a look and break, out, break down exactly what I have here. Inside my dump pouch, which is where I put my empty magazines or key elements of the game when we're playing. I've got my gloves. Very important. I've forgotten these before. Don't forget your gloves or unless you're going to have large welts on your fingers like that one right there. Next thing you're going to notice is that I have a bunch of magazines already in my kit. Here I have five. I've also got slots that I don't want to have the elastic wear out on the front of my kit. We're for three more. Uh, we'll go over spare magazines later. I also have a slot for a pistol magazine, which is empty, but you'll see when I get onto my gun case where my pistol magazines are. Multi-tools are very important. If you play airsoft, you should have a multi-tool that at least has a pair of pliers and a knife. Uh, if you got a better multi-tool, uh, it could have things like a screwdriver with different bits on it. On my battle belt, I also have an IFAC. I have a grenade holster for various grenades. I have my pistol holster, and that's it. And put this aside. Next, we're gonna get to the center of the rig. I've got a writing implement, and I also have a pencil down here as well as a pen. I th should have a Sharpie, it's not on me, so that's something I have to fix in the future. I've already went over the magazines. I have my push to talk radio system, my trucker mic, and my earpiece. I have my dead light. Uh, I keep one on my front of my rig as well as my helmet. And right here I have my simulation tourniquet. I also have one on my shoulder as well. These are for medicking in the uh, game rule set that is for the game I'm going to. I have my medical shears. I've got my real tourniquet in case something goes really bad. You can see that I have my radio, which is in this pouch right here. Uh, I'm also going to note that the battery is not currently in this radio. The battery is out of it, and I'll go over that later. I have the backwired antenna. I've got my buddy grenade holsters. And before I go over what's in the backpack, with well, my map pack rather, I've also got my uh, flexi cuffs here for those situations where you need to tie somebody up. 
Now, you'll also notice that I have the medical symbol here. That's because I have a blowout med kit also up here. I'm the team medic, which means I gotta be able to put people back together in the case that somebody gets banged up. I have uh, some basic first aid training and a little bit of trauma training, so uh, that's why I go with that stuff that I carry. In the smaller bag here, you'll notice that I have a small repair kit. This basically has some electrical tape, some duct tape, a couple of uh, zip ties and a couple rubber bands, and a piece of uh, double-sided Velcro for quick repair jobs on the field. One thing that's also not shown is my hydration bladder because it's drying out. This is going to go inside the backpack. Uh, it is really important to stay hydrated when you're playing military simulation events. Even when it's raining, you need to be able to stay hydrated. So always have an implement to carry either a water bottle or a hydration carrier on you in those larger games. And lastly for this set is my helmet. This is my fan helmet. Uh, I have a separate video where how I go over how I build this. But on top of my helmet I have another if it works, a dead light. Always check your things to make sure they work before you go. This one just has a very difficult button to press. Yeah. With the battery pouch in the back, my tags on the back as well, and the front mount for my camera that I'm going to show you stuff later for that too. For this particular game I'm going to, we're running on the tan side. So I have my LBX top, my cry bottoms, and a tan soft shell made by CQR that I'm going to be wearing during the Tier 1 mission, which is a specialty mission, also known as a dam mission by American Milsim, uh, which is going to be about 30 degrees Fahrenheit, so I want to be able to stay warm and not be miserable during that operation. Also part of your dress uniform, I'm bringing a spare set of gloves because I don't like being caught without gloves. And what's not shown physically, but is on his way, is I ordered a pair of Solomon uh, boots. And that should be here uh, within the week. That'll also be packed into my kit. Since we're going over body and protection items, we're going to go over face and eye pro next. All right. So first is my eye protection. These are full seal 3M Virtua glasses. I have two sets of them. One of them has a lanyard on it. These are usually kosher for most events. This one even has a lanyard on the back in case that's required. I always carry two with me. This is one of those things where you want backups in case something happens to a pair. Here are my dead rags. I'm considering these bodily protection because you don't want to get overshot. That always sucks. For my face protection, I have a Condor face cover as well as a liner for the inside that I just placed right next to my mouth because dental work sucks. I have a backup liner in case I lose the first one. And I also have a backup face uh, shroud, again, with another liner in it, just in case anything happens to these. For my eye protection, I have put in a baggie a glass wipe, so that way I can wipe off any kind of fog that, or I can apply fog protector before I go onto the field, rather. And also for personal protection is your uh, spare deadlight that I can wear around my neck and back up for the top of my helmet. Next on the list of personal items are flashlight and make sure it works and a knife. It's always good to have a functional knife on the field in case you find yourself caught in something or you have to get to an objective that might be sealed behind tape or something along those lines. I just think it's just a good idea to have. Just make sure the field or op you're going to allows you to carry it. The next thing you want to have with you are your spare magazines and your speed loader. It's a good idea to lubricate and just check all your magazines before you go to a national level event just because you don't want to be stuck with your pants down there with magazines that don't work. Another miscellaneous item that I have is a personal retention lanyard. Now we're getting into the things that take a little bit more explanation. These are my repair and spare parts kits. Let's go over the first one. I've got my Sharpie, which might go on my kit later. I've got an eraser in case I have to modify a flat hop. 
I've got note taking equipment. I've got a sorbo, or not really a sorbo pad. This one is just a uh, a rubber pad in case I have to fix an angle of engagement issues. Various uh, gaskets in case I have to fix leak or compression issues. I've got malice clips in case I have to mount any new pouches. I have a thing that helps, a clamp that helps with repairs. I've also got some various little doohickeys and doodads and more writing utensils in there uh, and some spare parts. Next is my toolkit. Inside my toolkit, I have a set of metric Allen wrenches, a long handled screwdriver so I can get into buffer tube screws on ARs, another screwdriver with the switchable tips, a good pair of scissors, trimming pliers and needle nose pliers. I have an assortment of picks in here in case I have to get to something, a utility knife, Another set of uh, keys, except these ones are star bits, or Torx wrench, however you want to call it. I also have micro Torx wrenches because gearboxes are usually made with smaller Torx nuts, or screws rather. Small Phillips head and small flathead screwdrivers and more picks. Set of tweezers. The special tool that comes with my gas blowback uh, pistol. A set of US, even though it's missing one, uh, Allen keys. We don't need you. And an adjustable crescent wrench. There are some other small things in here, mostly just Allen keys that I have as spares and backups in case I lose one of my smaller ones. Now, a repair kit isn't necessarily something that everyone has to bring. If you're going alone, I would suggest bringing it. But if you're on a team, you can assign certain people to bring certain things. For instance, I'm bringing the repair kit. I don't need to bring a bunch of chem lights, so I have a friend of mine who's bringing a bunch of chem lights. Lastly is my spare parts kit. In here, we have another marking utensil. We have some springs, a tap it plate. We've got a couple battery connectors in case I have to do some uh, high voltage testing with some heat shrink in there as well. I have my super glue. This has saved me in the past. Bring super glue with you, preferably one that's not open so that way you know it's going to be good when you have to use it. I've got more gaskets in here. I got more of my zip ties in here. I've got hop up parts. I got hop up buckings, nozzles, oil. I have uh, some Velcro parts. I've got small miscellaneous parts, such as bolts, springs, and all sorts of accessories, and electrical trigger parts in case I need to really get into the meat of a rifle that has gone down on the field. Along with the repair and maintenance kits, I have my Rain-X anti-fog, which I like to apply to my lenses before I go out in the field. I have my unjamming and cleaning rod, which you should always have with you with your airsoft stuff, just in case. I have synthetic grease, which is used to lube up the inside of a gearbox. And I also have silicone oil, which is used to lube up other things inside of boxes of gears. Another thing that has to do with repair is a cleaning cloth, which you can use to cut up to use on your cleaning rod, or you can use it to wipe things down in general. I also like to keep a length of shock cord on me because shock cord's great for mounting stuff. In my secondary repair kit, I have rubber bands, I have a large roll of electrical tape, and some more zip ties and a backup spoon for one of my grenades, which doesn't necessarily need to come with me, but I don't want to take it out. And I have some paracord. Paracord's also really good at mounting things or quick repairs. Next, we have this monstrosity of wires and cables. This is my LiPo Smart Charger. It's a small one, so that way it doesn't take up much weight or space. I have two types of radios, so unfortunately that means I have to bring two types of chargers with me. So hopefully you're smart enough not to buy two different radios. I just so happen to be testing out different types to find out which ones work best. And since I use camera equipment, I got my camera chargers here. And on your carry-on, don't forget to bring your phone charger. One thing I missed from my repair kit is my Teflon tape, which is great for fixing compression issues. My backup radio, a couple of carab a couple of carabiners for holding on to things like chem lights or objectives, 
a spare radio kit that has an earpiece and a microphone built in. In case my trucker mic goes down, I have a way to communicate with my team without having a squawker. And this is my camera kit. You'll notice it's empty because I'm using the cameras. So that will have my cameras in it when I pack my bags. Now, this is not necessarily something that everyone needs to bring, but if you made a fan helmet like mine, you're going to need to have spare parts for it in case something breaks. I also have a face cam on my gun, which I'm bringing two of those uh, assemblies there because I don't want to break one and be without one. And I'm also going to make a second one of these, which is my field of view camera, my point of view camera rather. So backups for my camera stuff. These things are light and they take up little space, so I don't mind bringing a bunch of extra ones of these and they're only made out of PLA, so I'll kind of expect them to break. Another thing that I'm bringing that hasn't arrived yet that's on order is a travel power strip. So that way, when you go to a hotel, especially at these games that are far away, they don't always have a lot of outlets. So we've had trouble in the past charging everyone's batteries because we've used up all of our instrumentation for charging batteries. So it's a great idea to have a power strip with you when you go to a hotel. If you're part of a team, don't forget your team branding. I've got a flag here that I like to fly because it's lighter than a banner. And if you have weapons that require special tools, such as the KWA Ronin, which has an adjustable spring, you're going to want to make sure you have the tools used to adjust those. Here's the last couple of various items in my kit. I have a spare set of flexi cuffs, which is not a great uh, product right here. This, these ones tend to break on me. Uh, I also have um, ibuprofen and aspirin. I have two cold packs because sometimes people get boo-boos when they're out on the field and you want to be able to remedy that and make people feel comfortable. And just in case, even though most Milsom events don't require them, I like to have at least one barrel bag with me just because I like to play it safe. Now, here are a few things that I'm not bringing. Why aren't I bringing these things? Well, it's because I'm taking a flight to this particular national, so I can't bring pressurized canisters. That means green gas can't go with me. Any kind of CO2 charge or things that look like grenades, they shouldn't come with me. I have silicone oil in a spray can. I'd love to have it to repair stuff, but I'm on a plane, can't come. And BBs. Why not BBs, you might ask? BBs are ridiculously heavy for what they are. That means that if you're trying to make 50 pounds on a bag, you might not be able to make that if you're carrying all the BBs you're bringing in. Instead, I will buy my BBs at the field. Finally, what we have left is our batteries, our batteries, and our batteries. Now, in here, I have all of my Airsoft batteries. I have my 7.4s for one of my gun platforms. I have my 11.1s for my other gun platform. And I have my brick batteries for my fan on my helmet. Here are my radio batteries. And here I have my... Let's open you first. Come on. I have my camera batteries. I have various other batteries that not just me, but my team can use. CR123s, I have AA's, AAA's, I have CR2032's and LR44's or whatever their new one is. I don't remember. I need to get more LR44's because this is what my site uses. Because keep in mind all of the electrical parts of your weapon platform and your kit and make sure to have spare batteries for each and every one of them. Now, I saved these for last because this is sort of special. Unfortunately, the TSA does not allow lithium batteries on checked luggage. So if you're flying, you need to make sure that all these batteries go on your carry-on. So I keep them separate. And I make sure to keep everything charged because you don't want to be charging things at the hotel on your first night there. And I make sure everything is safe and ready. Batteries should not be allowed to freely move in a baggie because that means that they can contact each other and essentially they can lose their charge. Uh, so it's a good idea to have a kit like this to keep batteries in. Some other things that I haven't shown you on camera, if you're going to be doing a lot of video stuff, you're going to need your laptop. Uh, you're also going to need, you know, your clothes, the stuff you're going to be wearing in the airport, your underclothes, your underwear, socks. I shouldn't have to tell you all this stuff. This is the stuff that you should know to bring uh, already. Now, when it comes to carrying all your stuff, you should have a nice loadout bag, especially if you're going to be going on to planes. So loadout bags are essential. You can find uh, one like this one. This is the LBT loadout bag. 
511 also makes a bag, and my previous one before this one was a Voodoo Tactical loadout bag. So there are options. They usually run you anywhere between $100 and $300. This one I found on sale at $150 when it's normally $300. Uh, another great thing I like about this one is it rolls. It's on wheels. Uh, so going to the airport means it's a lot easier. My last bag, the Voodoo Tactical one, did not have wheels. It just had a uh, carry handle. So now we're going to load up this bag. Let's do it. Now a few things that I'm probably going to pack in my carry-on that I didn't really mention earlier are the chargers, because I'm most likely going to need them at the hotel. So I'm going to bring all of my charging equipment with me in the carry-on. And the last part of this is my coat. It is cold out here in New England. I'll be wearing that to the airport. But we're not done yet. You can't play airsoft without a rifle. So let's take a look and see what I got in my rifle case. If you're going to be going on a flight, your case needs to be able to travel through TSA, which basically means it needs to be able to decompress and it needs to be able to have TSA locks assembled on there. I'll bring up an image of what TSA locks look like because I don't have mine on me at the moment. Right here I have my primary. We need to make sure to remove any compressed air you have, so I need to remove these two CO2 cartridges before I leave. I have my secondary, nothing's in it. I have the batteries that I've taken out. Remember, you gotta take out any lithium batteries. These CR20, sorry, these CR123s are lithium. They have to come out and they cannot go on your checked baggage. It has to go in your carry-on. It's also a smart idea to disconnect batteries when you're traveling anyway. And on the lower end of things, I have my secondary. This one I believe uses, oh, also uses CR2031, so these have to come out as well. A couple of leaves that don't need to go with me. And an armorer's wrench, which again is good for repair. I just keep it in this case because of the weight. I'm not going just yet, so I'm going to leave these in here for now, but I will remove those before I leave. I just don't want to waste the air in them. And there we go. All set. So there you have it. That's pretty much what I bring with me to a national level event that I have to fly to. Of course, there are differences if you're driving to an event. You don't have to worry about not being able to pack grenades, gas, and BBs. You can bring those with you. You don't have any weight restrictions or compressed gas restrictions. So it doesn't make any sense to buy them at the field. Buy them where it's cheap and buy them local to keep your local airsoft going up. There also might be some discrepancies in the kits that everyone wears, so obviously not everyone's going to be bringing the same thing. Some people prefer chest rigs, some people prefer AKs, and you have different roles. If you're a saw gunner, you're going to want to bring your saw magazines and you're going to want to have a better sidearm you know, for clearing buildings, especially in places where saws aren't allowed in buildings as an opera, you know, in operational. And if you're a recon, you want to make sure you have sniper and equipment you know, to run for that. Uh, same thing if you're a grenadier. You're going to want to have your underbarrel or your launcher or whatever you have set up and ready to go, minus, if you're flying, compressed gas. So that is all I have for you today. 
If you like this, please hit the like button. If there's something that I missed that you think that I should bring with me to my national level events, please comment in the comment section down below and tell me what it is so that way I don't forget it. And uh, everybody else should take a look, see in the comments and find out what ever, everybody else has to say about what they're bringing and what they're doing. Uh, so that way everyone goes to these events prepared and everyone has a great time at them. So again, that's all. And I hope to see you guys again real soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.